All right, guys, so these are the ingredients you're going to need to make your churro toffee from Disneyland. You're gonna need some salt. We use Himalayan salt. You're going to need some cinnamon and some sugar. You're also going to need four sticks of butter. You will need a candy thermometer. This will be my first time using a candy thermometer, so we'll see how it goes. You'll need a large saucepan. This is, I don't know how big it is. I think it's probably a half sheet cake. Half sheet cake, yeah. A half sheet cake size. You'll need some parchment paper. And then I chose to get the Ghirardelli chocolate, but you're going to need about 25, maybe 30 ounces of chocolate. So these are all the ingredients that you need to make the churro toffee. So here we go. So the very first step is to get your large saucepan and four sticks of butter. You're going to need one teaspoon of salt and two cups of sugar. And so you just pour it all in here and you let it come to a boil. And here we are. So at this point, when it's starting to boil, you are going to put your candy thermometer in here and you're going to wait until it gets between three, no, 285 and 300. So we're gonna leave that be just for a minute. While that is boiling, I recommend getting your pan out and ready with your parchment paper because as soon as this mixture reaches 285 to 300, we're going to take it off and we're going to pour it directly on here. So there we are, just waiting for this stuff to get to the right temperature and we'll pour it out. Okay, so this is after it boiled and we put it in the pan. Obviously you can see it is like black. I messed up. I left the heat on like on an eight. I think it was like a seven or eight. You probably need it anywhere between a four and a five. So we, it started to smell and sure enough, it's burnt. So I gotta let this dry and then we'll pour this out and then we're gonna start all over. But it's supposed to be a light, like a chestnut color. This is clearly black and it is not right. So we're gonna start over. All right, so this is weeks later. As you can see, I'm using a different pan. We did a lot of research to figure out what exactly to do. A lot of the videos we saw in research said to use a wooden spoon. So we have a brand new wooden spoon and I'm using a smaller saucepan and my thermometer, I'm pretty sure last time was touching the bottom of the pan. And this time we lifted it up so that it's not touching the bottom of the pan. Um, so anyway, and we also learned this is probably going to take about 10 minutes and I'm going to constantly be stirring this. I did not do that last time. The original recipe that I used did not tell me to mix it all the time and I was just literally following the directions. So after research, I learned wooden spoon, mix all the time. And then when we're done, we are going to put it in the pan. So stay tuned. Okay, so we are at 200 degrees. We're gonna go to almost 300. And we have been constantly stirring this and we're very happy with the results. Um, we just made some slight modifications. Like I said, we pulled the thermometer up so it's not touching the bottom of the pan. We've got a wooden spoon and we are constantly stirring it. We put it on a five, which is obviously medium. And it's been about 10 minutes. Um, I don't know, I'm very happy with this batch thus far, but constant stirring, wooden spoon, medium temperature, and the thermometer not on the bottom of the pan. And what are we at, 200? A little bit above 200. Yeah, a little above 200. We're gonna go to about 290, 300. That's what most of the recipes said we read was about 300. And then we'll immediately take it off. Much better. Much better. So we took it off the heat at like 280. Yeah, spread it out. Or not 280, 290. It was like 285, 290. This looks so much better. And I, don't touch the pan, it gets hot really quick. Is it hot? No, it's warm. It's warm. I noticed last time I touched it and it got hot, which makes sense because it's metal. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna let this cool, but much better color. We did better this time. Yeah, success. Success. Okay, next up is you take a fork, not a fork, a knife, and you perforate the toffee. So I've gone through here, it's starting to cool down. It's um, starting, it's a little squishy. You can see the 
still makes a little indention, but it's doing exactly what I need it to do. So I went through and perforated it. I'm gonna wait a few more minutes until I can get it more separated, and then I'm gonna stick it in the refrigerator. Okay, so we perforated all the toffee, put it in the refrigerator for about 20, 25 minutes, let it get hard. Then we melted our Ghirardelli chocolate in a microwave safe bowl. We have cinnamon and sugar. And now we dip them in the white chocolate, then put the cinnamon sugar on them. They're not as pretty as the ones at Disneyland, but I'm sure they're gonna taste amazing. So let me show you how this works. So this is pretty messy, I'm gonna admit. Not sure exactly how they do it at Disneyland, but it goes on pretty thick. I just kind of wipe it off as much as I can. Then I get the cinnamon and sugar, sprinkle it all over it. Here we go and then place it on the paper. Okay, so we're done. Um, they look amazing. They're not as um, perfect as the ones at Disneyland, but they're still very cute. Once we dipped them in chocolate and then the cinnamon and sugar and put them on the parchment paper, they only took about two to three minutes to solidify, if that's the right word. Um, so I'm so excited, here we go. Wow. Mmm. This tastes just like the Disneyland churro toffee. Mmm. Great recipe. I'll put the recipe on the video. Mmm. This is delicious. If you guys have not had this from Disneyland, you can make it at home. Wow. Very good. So, Make sure to subscribe to my page. Give me a thumbs up. I will um, put the recipe in here. And thanks for watching.